Wednesday night, we're talking about the doctrine of predestination. And we're also, these are some of the subjects we're talking about, pre, predestination. And we're talking about the shadows of the Old Testament, shadows of the Old Testament. And the shadows, the shadows are the rituals. The shadows, that is all of the rituals. A shadow is not the real thing. It's where the sun shines and, it, and the light is blocked and there's just a shape there. The real thing, when you stand in the sun, that's the image. And in Hebrews 10 and 1, the Bible says that there's a shadow in the old and a very image in the new. When you're standing in the sun, casting a shadow, the shadow is not real. The Old Testament is not the real thing. The real is the very image. Now, in the Old Testament, you had the real. They had two parts to the law. They had the, the letter and the spirit of the law. And we've talked about how that you've got, how that you've got a temple over here in the Old Testament. You've got a temple in the New. You have circumcision over here over here, and you had circumcision in the new. You've got an Ark of the Covenant over here, and you've got an Ark of the Covenant in the new. And you've got priest and king over here, and you've got priest and king in the new. Over here in the new, the temple is the church. That's you and I. The circumcision is of the heart. And, of course, you've got the law written on tables of stone over here. And and then you have the uh, circumcision, and circumcision is of the heart, one, two. Then you have the Ark of the Covenant, that was sprinkled. And over here, the, the heart, our hearts are sprinkled. And over there, you've got the priest and the king. And over here, we are priests and kings. And over there, you've got law written on tables of stone. Over here, you've got law written on fleshy tables of the heart. And since the law is written on the heart, and since the Ark of the Covenant was sprinkled and the, and the heart is sprinkled, then the heart is equal to the Ark of the Covenant. Now, I'm talking about shadows of the Old Testament as opposed to the uh, very image of the new. And we're talking about resting in these things, resting in the spiritual Sabbath. The Sabbath is spiritual. The Sabbath is over here is, is either every seventh year or every seven days or sometimes it's not on the seventh day or the seventh year. Over here the Sabbath is every day, is daily. Now I've, I've said this to you before. I'm going to give you a I'm going to show you how I think when I'm studying this way. I'm going to give you a, a first day in algebra class lesson. I use, I use algebra in my thinking. Mary says she didn't learn algebra, but she uses algebra in cooking. Bob uses algebra when he plays the guitar. We all use algebra every day. And I'm going to show you how I use algebra in teaching the Bible. Let me give you just a quick lesson. Now, I'm not the algebra teacher. That's Mike back there. He's got a master's degree in math. I was pretty good in it when I was in school. And uh, so, Mike, if I make a mistake, you just shut up. And don't you or Michael give me any answers because they're the ones that are the wizards in math. So if they start to talk, slap them, okay? Y'all are not allowed in this conversation. We still don't know a lot. Yeah, you know, you know this, Mike. <laughs> this is like, this is like, uh, this is like playing in a sandbox to Mike. I'm not saying that to be humble. <laughs> You're not, okay. But let me show you something. I really want you to see this. If you can learn to think this way, I'm going to give you a real simple algebra problem. If you're looking for, let's just say, you're looking for a number, just put, you know, number of apples. 
and you're looking for a number of oranges, I'm going to teach you Bible with this. Oranges. And you're looking for the number of pairs. Each one of them is in a basket, let's say. Number of pairs. Well, for the, for the number of apples, we're going to call the number the amount. 5, 6, 8, 10. We're going to call that X. Then we're going to call the number of oranges. We're looking for X apples. How many ever X is? Then we're going to look for Y is going to be the number of oranges. And Z is going to be the number of pears in its basket. Now, here's, here's the problem. We know that Y equals 2x. We know that y, the number of pairs, equals twice the number of x, 2x, minus 10. This is real simple. It's real simple. Then we know that z, y, is equal to z. I'm going to make it real easy for you. And the only thing we know in this is that x is equal, x is equal to 10. x is equal to 10. We want to know what is z and what is y. Well, y equals 2, 2 times x. What is x? It's 10, isn't it? It's 10. 2 times 10. Y is equal 2 times 10 minus 10, isn't it? 2 times 10 is what? 20 minus 10 is 10. Y equals 10, isn't it? Well, if Y equals Z, how much is Z? Z equals 10. Therefore, you've got an, you've got an axiom in algebra that says things that are equal to the same thing are equal to each other. Therefore, if x equals 10 and y equals 10 and z equals 10, then x, y, and z are all equal to each other. And we know that x is 10 apples. Therefore, you've got y, 10 oranges. You've got z, 10 pairs, don't you? Well, when you can come up with things that are equal to the same thing in the Bible, this is biblical algebra. It's what it is. They're equal to each other. Let me show you, okay? I'm going to give you this. It's simple. Well, let me just, well, I'll, go, I'll come back and tell you something else in a minute. I'm going to show Mary. She uses algebra. Bob uses algebra. Now, look here. Look over here in Hebrews 10. Remember. X, Y, and Z are equal to each other, aren't they? That's why Z is, we, Z is equal to X. Z is equal to Y. Now, let's see if this is true in the Bible. Look at Hebrews. That's like, in front of Mike, that's like teaching a, uh, that's like saying goo-goo. <laughs> but I'm bringing out a point. And Mike will tell you this. When you learn things equal to the same thing or equal to each other, you never leave that. That's a basic axiom of mathematics all the way through advanced calculus, no matter where you go. It's always true. And it's true in the Bible. Now, let's go to... Does everybody understand that? That wasn't hard, was it? Things that are equal to the same thing are equal to each other. If X is equal to Y and Z is equal to Y, then X and Z are both equal to Y. Isn't that right? Therefore, X and Z are equal to the, each other, aren't they? Is that the same thing as like uh, a trump voice in that? Yeah, it's the same thing. A trumpet is equal to a voice. Right. So when the trumpet sounds, the voice sounds. Right. That's right. Let me show you this. I'm going to show you. This is the axiom that I used right here in, in algebra. 
when I said things are equal to the same thing, you'll find it right here in Hebrews 10 and verse... Well, let's look at Hebrews 10 and verse 19. We've said that the Old Testament was the shadow, the New Testament was the new, was the very image. Look at verse 19. Well, first of all, let's read back here. I'm going to go real slow with you tonight and show you some of this. Look back in verse 9, of uh, verse 8 in chapter 9. Then we'll, go to, then we'll go to chapter 10, verse 19. Chapter 9, verse 8. The Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while as the first tabernacle was yet standing. Now we know Old Testament had a tabernacle was built in the temple. We know that the New Testament is the temple of God. Everything here was a shadow. Everything in the New Testament is the very image. It is spiritual. Look at 19 of chapter 10. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest, or the holy of holies, we know that the holy of holies is here on the western end. You have the north, you have the south and the west, and then the tabernacle faced east, faced east, the holiest was where the Ark of the Covenant was. That was sprinkled. We in the New Testament are elected unto obedience in the sprinkling of blood, and we find in verse 22 here that our hearts are sprinkled. That's the spiritual. But I want to show you in the spiritual this axiom of things that are equal to the same thing are equal to each other, okay? What I'm doing, how I'm teaching you the spiritual Ark of the Covenant, how I'm teaching you what the veil of the temple is spiritually. I'm going to show you the veil spiritual. And I'm going to use the same axiom I used in that algebra equation. The same axiom, things that are equal to the same thing are equal to each other. Let's look here in 19. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest. That is where the Ark of the Covenant was. That's where the high priest, which is Christ from chapter 8, that's what he enters into. The high priest entered there once a year on the tenth day of the seventh month. And he sprinkled the Ark of the Covenant. And Christ comes into us, the temple, and sprinkles our hearts. Now let's look at this algebra axiom right here. We enter into the holiest by a new and living way through the veil of having therefore brethren boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus by a new and living way and the word way is hodos. And there is a narrow way, a narrow hodos and a broad way, a broad hodos and John wishes for Gaius the well way. He said, I would that you prosper and be in health. Well, of course, that word prosper is you, hodos. It means the well way. And Jesus said there is a narrow way and a broad way. John wishes for Gaius prosper, which is not money. It's the well hodos. Well hodos. And that's the narrow way. So if, and if Jesus said, I am the way, and the denotes there's no other way, then when the priest goes into the holiest and, and offers the blood of Christ, we enter into the holiest by the narrow way. That is figurative language. Now let's look at the next verse and see this algebra axiom that things are equal to the same thing or equal to each other. Having a high, uh, by, we enter in by a new and living way, verse 20, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh. When you see I E, when you see something that says 
the woman, i.e., his mother, came into the room. I.e. means that is to say. Or it means equals. That's what it means. The veil equals the flesh of Christ. Veil equals flesh. If I can show you anything else that the flesh is equal to, then whatever that flesh is equal to, like this axiom says, things that are equal to the same thing or equal to each other, this will clear up a lot of scripture for you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Am I losing anybody? This is real first day algebra is what it is. If I can show you the veil is equal to his flesh, we found that that is to say means it's equal to. The spiritual veil of the temple is equal to the flesh of Christ. Let's go to the John the 6th chapter and let's apply this mathematical algebra axiom. I use algebra all the time teaching you Bible. I taught on biblical algebra several years ago. I didn't go this slow. I'm gonna, I want you to see this because this is a way to think and study. It's a way you do your life. All right. I want you to learn to think like this. Everybody here uses algebra. You just don't know you do. Everybody uses it. You can't live life without using algebra. No one can. It's impossible. Isn't that right, Mike? Wherever you are, yeah. Michael, you can't live life without it. It's impossible. You use it, and you may think, algebra, uh, that's too difficult. I can't see that. I'll explain it to you. When Bob plays the guitar, he uses algebra. When Mary makes a cake, sometimes she uses algebra. She just doesn't know it. I've never seen X, Y, Z. <laughs> Mary, I'm not joking. Don't play with me. I'm serious about this. You do use algebra without a doubt. Everybody here does. It's impossible not to use it. Look here in John. I'm going to show you this. John. I want you to... I've said this many times, but I want you to see how to think this way. Look at John 6. We're looking for something that the flesh equals to, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Huh? Because then we'll know whatever that is is the veil, isn't it? All right. Now, Jesus says in verse 32, chapter 6, Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth his life unto the world. Look over here in verse 48. Jesus says, I am the bread. Let's put it this way. Let me erase this right here. And just put, Jesus is the bread. When you see is, it means equal to. Right? Jesus equals the bread. All right? Now let's continue reading. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This bread, this is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh. We're looking for something that's equal to the flesh, aren't we? So we can find the veil, right? Bread equals the flesh. Now, if the, bre if the flesh equals 
Jesus, if the flesh is equal to the veil, and the bread is the flesh, then the flesh equals to the bread, doesn't it? Flesh equals to the bread. If the veil is equal to the flesh, and the flesh is equal to the bread, things that are equal to the same thing are all equal to each other. The bread and the veil are the same, aren't they? Huh? That's right. The bread and the veil are the same. Well, let's read the rest of this. This is really algebra is what it is. Yeah. I am the living bread which came down from heaven, and if any man eat this bread, mm -hmm. you got to eat the bread, don't you? Mm -hmm. The bread is the flesh. He shall live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Now let's go down here and look at verse 53 in the same context. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Right? right. Then he tells you what the flesh is down here in verse 55. He said the flesh is the bread, and you've got to eat the bread. He tells you again, my flesh is meat indeed. So the flesh equals meat indeed. Everything we can put in this list of things, they're all going to be equal to each other, aren't they? Huh? Yeah. All of them. We define the word indeed in the Greek, and that word is a l e t h e i a aletheia. Therefore, aletheia, that means, well, it's aletheis. It comes from aletheia. Aletheia is the word truth. Indeed is a l e t h e s. That word aletheis means of truth. So when you eat the flesh, you eat of truth. So flesh equals, equals eat of truth. Now let me show you something here. Everything in this line is equal to each other. Isn't that right? That's true according to algebraic axiom. And that's true in everything in the universe. The flesh equals eating of truth. What is the word truth? Aletheia. What words did it come from? When you enter the veil, when you enter the veil, and when Christ enters into us and sprinkles our hearts, He sprinkles our hearts in the veil, in the flesh, in the bread, in the flesh, which is meat indeed, which is truth. The word truth is L-A-N-T-H-A-N-O, lanthano. That means to hide something or to conceal. When you place the alpha in front of the word as a negative particle and negates the word and gives an opposite meaning, doing that it translates to aletheia or the word truth meaning not to hide anything. When we enter in to the veil with the blood sprinkled on our hearts, that's when. That's the spiritual picture when we begin not to hide anything. God blood baptizes us, causes us to die to self, and speak the truth. Right? Let me show you one other thing about the bread. Let's go over here in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, 10th chapter, and verse 17. For we, being many, are one bread. Now, why are we the bread? Because Christ is in us. Christ is in you, and he's the bread, isn't he? And that's the inner man, the bread, Christ in us, 
the hope of glory. So we're the bread in the sense that Christ is inside of us. And what is the bread according to the fourth chapter of Matthew when Jesus was tempted by Satan? The, word of God. The, word. the bread is the word. Bread equals the word of God, doesn't it? Doesn't the Bible say thy word is equals truth? Isn't the Holy Spirit the truth? Doesn't it equal the truth? When you enter into the holiest, it's because the truth equals the Holy Spirit in John 14, 15, 16, John 15, 26, John 16, 13, 1 John 5 and 6, the Spirit is the truth. And thy word is truth, therefore the Holy Spirit, John 17, 17, therefore the Holy Spirit and the word are the same. The word in Matthew, the fourth chapter, is the bread of God, quoted from Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter. The bread is the flesh the bread is also, doesn't he say, we being many are one bread and one body? Or well, what is the body? The body, according to Colossians 1, 18 and 1, 24, the body equals the church. This is, if the veil is the flesh, the flesh is the bread, the flesh is meat indeed, the flesh is eating of truth. The church, I, I didn't put it down, the, the flesh is the bread, the bread is the body, is the body, and the body is the church. Our body equals church. I'm getting a mess up here. Church. All of these things are equal. Every one of them are equal to each other. Do you see that? That's algebra, mathematics is all it is. And it's simple. Let me give you something else. If, now I'll, I'll continue to use this as we study the spiritual Sabbath. There is another axiom that says if, if equals are added to equals, the results are equal. Now, Bob uses this all the time playing the guitar. If you're going to go from B flat to C, if you're going to change keys, B flat to C, how many steps is that? Two steps. No, it's one step. One step. Half a... Half a tone, another half a tone. If you're going to transpose a song into another key, and you're going to trans and you're going to transpose from B flat to C, you're going to raise every note in the song one step, aren't you? And what you come up with is the exact same tune a step higher. That's what. You, that's why it's hard for these. Keyboard men to transpose while they're playing. Because when you get into flats, uh, instead of whole notes, it's pretty hard to do that. So when you, when you're, when Bob tra transposes from B flat to C, he's got to raise everything in the song, doesn't he? But it's equal to the original. But it's equal to the original because it's the exact same tune, right? Let's look at equals added to equals in the Bible because I use this all the time. I don't stop and tell you, and I feel obligated to stop and show you this because sometimes I'll say I use algebra to teach all the time. Let's look at two things that are equal to each other, and let's add something to... Well, there's another axiom that says things... Well, the one we use, things that are equal to each other... Everything that's equal to each other, equal to one another. There, if you have x equals y and y equals z, then z equals x, just like we did up here. Now, let me show you two things that are equal. 
this has to do with the spiritual Sabbath. Am I losing you, any of you? It's not hard. Is it? Huh? Somebody tell me. It's really simple. Just listen. If Let's go over here. Let's go back to what we're talking about. Some of you will get it. I'm trying to stay as simple as I can. Let's go over here to what we're talking about, the spiritual Sabbath. Let's go back to Hebrews, the third chapter. Hebrews, the third chapter. I'll go ahead and show you this before I do this. If you're looking at something up here, and uh, you can substitute any one of these words in any verse for the other words. Couldn't you do that if they're equal to each other? Huh? Well, there's an axiom that says if equals are substituted for equals, the results are equal. And I'm going to sub. In fact, Mary does this when she's cooking. If she's going to make a pie and it takes four ingredients, and she's got an ingredient that she doesn't have, but she's got something she can substitute and come up with still basically the same pie, she substitutes an equal for an equal and comes out with the same thing. That's algebra, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I think this way when I'm teaching, all the time I'm teaching, I use these basic axioms that Mike says that you use. I'm trying to show you how this works. It's very important to know that if the veil is the flesh, and the flesh is the bread, and the bread's the body, you can put it this way. If the veil equals the flesh, and the flesh equals the bread, and the bread equals the body, and the bread equals truth, you can put all that equals truth, and the truth equals Holy Spirit, and the truth also equals the Word of God. You started with the veil. They're all equal to each other in this spiritual temple of God. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's not hard at all. Veil is equal to the flesh, equal to the bread, equal to the body. Well, we've got to put the church in there. Equals to the church because any of these, anything that you find any one of these things equal to, they're all equal to each other in the spiritual temple of God. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. What about the bride? Well, and that's the bride. The church is the bride, equals the bride, equals the wife, equals, and so on. Mm -hmm. You can fill up the board with all these equals. God has one word. He's got all these different ways of saying the same thing. What is faith? Well, and I don't talk the Greek word. What is it? It is. And it is death to self, isn't it? What is repentance? It's a turning away from self, isn't it? What is the daily cross? That's death to self. All of these, and what is it when we pray? We bow to God and we turn from self. So all of these things are equal to one another. Do you see that? That's not hard at all, is it? Now, look here. Let's, let's go back over here to, that's algebra when you substitute something in a cake. When you substitute something in a pie. When you come up with basically, have you ever done that cooking? You've done it, haven't you, Mary? When you substitute something, when you're cooking, and come up with the basic same tasting thing, you're doing algebra is what you're doing. It, I'm not trying to make everybody algebra students. I'm giving you basic first week algebra axioms to use in the Bible, in the Word of God, to understand it. If you don't understand this, I'll sit down with you and go through it slowly with you. It is a way of thinking. When people say, boy, you understand a lot of that stuff, and they put it together, 
That's the only way. It's through mathematical thinking. Now, let's go over here to... I'm going to show you two axioms together. That's why I'm talking slow. I want you to see this. You say, I hate algebra. Then go kill yourself because you're using it every day. Everybody's using it. You just don't call it algebra. You call it substituting cream for milk or water for milk in a cornbread that will make good as taste of cornbread with water as it does with milk. I don't know how you substitute, but when you do, you use it, you use it every day. You just don't know. Three-year-old, five-year-olds use it. Eight-year-olds use it. They just hate it when it's called algebra. That's all. Now, look here in Hebrews. We're talking about spiritual Sabbath, over, uh, literal Sabbath in the Old Testament. Spiritual over here. The handwriting of ordinances was blotted out over here in the Old Testament. The very image is in the New. Let's look here in Hebrews 3. And we're talking about the people in the wilderness. And verse 9, When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years, wherefore I was grieved with that generation and said, They do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in the wrath that they would not enter into my rest. That word rest is called a called apostis. It's equated with the Sabbath. The word Sabbath means rest. Called apostis. Now, down here in verse 17, this is about when Israel was wandering in the wilderness. They weren't believing God. They were murmuring against Moses. They were murmuring against God. Verse 17, but with whom was he grieved 40 years? Was it not with them that had sinned whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? To whom swear he that they would not enter into his rest? Rest is equated with Sabbath all through here. We've already t talked about that in chapter 4 when he refers to the rest of the seventh day in verse 3. And he actually calls the rest in verse 9 of chapter 4. That's the word sabbatismos, and it's translated rest. And it's, and it's equated with all the rest of these words rest through this chapter. The rest, the word kataposis, means to settle down or repose oneself. To whom swear he? A lot of times I'm preaching this real fast and say, this equals this and this equals this, and I'm not explaining it to you. I'm slowing down to explain to you what I'm doing when I'm going lickety-split through this and tell you how I'm thinking. And I'm doing it real fast sometimes. To whom swear he that they would not enter into his rest or into his Sabbath, but to them that believe not, so we see they could not enter in Enter in, it doesn't say enter into rest, but what does it imply? It, it implies entering into the rest, doesn't it? They couldn't enter into rest because of unbelief. So, no rest. Rest equals Sabbath, doesn't it? Uh -huh. Well, no rest equals no Sabbath, doesn't it? Isn't that right? No rest is no Sabbath and unbelief equals no rest. That's what he says in that verse, doesn't it? Unbelief equals no rest. If rest is equal to the Sabbath, like we said a while ago, we can, we can substitute equals for equals. Unbelief is no rest, and no rest is no Sabbath. So unbelief, we're going to substitute for no rest. Unbelief, no Sabbath, and no rest are the same thing. We're going to substitute for no rest the word no Sabbath. 
right? Equals substituted for equals. We're going to just put no Sabbath in there instead of no rest. Unbelief equals no Sabbath. If unbelief, which is the word A-P-I-S-T-O-S, -S, equals no Sabbath, and I'm usually doing this real fast when I'm teaching. I'm just thinking this going boom, 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 real fast. I want you to understand how I'm thinking when I'm feeding you this stuff. The word unbelief comes from the word P-I-S-T-I-S, -I which is the word, or equals, it is faith. That's the word faith. Placing the alpha privative in front of a word negates the word, gives an opposite meaning. No faith equals no Sabbath. If no faith equals no Sabbath, then faith equals Sabbath, doesn't it? Believing God, the ones who entered into God's rest were the ones that believed Him, isn't it? Right. And believe and faith are the same word. Believe is, is the verb. Faith is the noun. So, when you enter into the Sabbath, it's by faith, it's by believing God. Now, I'm going to give you something here. This, here's how I'm thinking when I'm going. Everything that faith is, is the Sabbath, isn't it? Gosh, how long is it going to take us to go through that? Years? Everything that faith is, the Sabbath is. Do you understand that? That's everything. So, faith equals the Sabbath. Now, let me give you another mathematical axiom. I use this when I'm preaching all the time. I do it all the time. I'm fixing to do it right now. There's an axiom that says, if equals are added to equals, the results are equal. If equals are substituted from equals, the results are equal. If we add to faith, we add to the Sabbath, our resting in Christ, don't we? Is there any place in the Bible that says we need to add to our faith? I guess there is. How about 2 Peter 1 and 5? Let's look at it. This is a way of thinking if you learn it. I don't care whether you failed algebra or not. The reason you failed algebra is because you had a real poor teacher. She didn't know how to tell you these things. She didn't know how to illustrate them to you. Because everybody here uses it. Don't y'all transpose keys sometimes, Bob? Oh, sure. And you've got to raise every chord in the, in the progression, everything if you can raise in a half step, everything has to be raised half a step, and you still have that equal tune, don't you? That's algebra. Now, let's look at, at 2 Peter 1. Verse 5. Besides all this, giving all diligence, add to your faith. Well, if you add to your faith... What I'm getting at, faith equals the Sabbath, doesn't it? Faith equals Sabbath. Sabbath is resting in all that God's doing because He says, I have declared the end from the beginning and from ancient times everything that's not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I'll do all my pleasure. Let's rest in that. Let's get into the Sabbath. How are we going to rest more in the spiritual Sabbath? The Sabbath's not Saturday or Sunday. The rituals, the handwriting of ordinances of the Old Testament were blotted out and everything is spiritual now. Sunday's not the Sabbath. The Sabbath's every day. How often do we believe God and have faith? Every day? 
Well, if we're going to add anything, if we want to put a plus to the faith, we've got to put it, that's what's going to make us rest in the spiritual things of God. When you add, if equals are added to equals, you take an equation, you add something to one side, you have to add it to the other side. Is that right, Mike? That's exactly it. You can't get by without it. Here in the in in First Peter, the second Peter, the first chapter, the Bible says there are seven things you have to add to your faith. You want to know how you begin to rest in the Lord? You have to put a plus on your faith. Didn't the apostles come to Jesus and say, Lord, increase our faith? What does increase mean? It means to add something to it in the 17th chapter of Luke. Are y'all understanding this? Mm -hmm. It's not like it's... I'm going very slow. Let's add to our faith. If you add... And people come to me and say, Jim, I don't know how to rest in these things. How can I rest when I have a... When I, my car breaks down, I don't have the money to get it, and I, and I don't have... It can't have it fixed and I'm having these problems and I've got this. you got to rest in it. Well, I just can't do it out of a clear blue sky. I know that. There's a way to rest in the Sabbath. It's resting in faith because faith is equal to the Sabbath. It is. What's faith? If you start defining faith, I don't have time to do all this. Let's erase this equation here. To erase his equation. We know what faith is. Whatever faith is, the Sabbath is, isn't it? Huh? Because anything that's equal to the same thing is equal to each other. Everything that faith is equal to is equal to the rest in your life, isn't it? It'll what, it's what will make you rest. So the best thing to do is find out everything that you can find that faith is and faith does. Everything. Well, if faith is equal to the substance, then in faith is equal to the Sabbath, the Sabbath and substance are both equal to faith. Therefore, the substance is equal to the Sabbath, isn't it? Isn't that right? And that is what makes you rest, whatever the substance is. Right? Now, how many places are we going to have to go with this? This will take you all over the New Testament, all over the Bible. Here's how your resting in the things of God increases. You increase your faith. That increases your rest because faith and the Sabbath are the same. Haven't we concluded that? Unbelief, you don't end into rest. Hebrews tells us that, doesn't it? Yeah. Belief is faith. Belief is the verb. Faith is the noun. So you enter into resting. Here's how you, this is how it comes about. It's not something you do. It's something God commands in you. And the word add is a wonderful word. <laughs> It's the word epi, C-H-O-R-E-G-E-O. -E -E Epicoregeo, we get the word choreography from choregeo. Choreography comes from C-H-O-R-O-S and ego. Ego means to lead, to lead, and choros is a circular dance. A dance leader is a choreographer. That's what it is. Epi means to superimpose. When you superimpose something, you cover something. It's what you do. So you cover with your covering. Here's what adding is. It's covering your life with the circular dance. The Jews had something they called a sacred dance. It was the Passover. It was called the Hag. The Haggadah was another name for 
the Passover. And they danced to dance. Now God tells us what the dance is. And not only that, this is adding a cover to your life. Not only that, when you add to your faith, you're going to have to add to the Sabbath, aren't you? Because faith and the Sabbath are equal. Is that right? I run through this sometimes and I'm going, I say, this is algebra. And y'all think, where does he get that? I'm using algebra all the way through all my messages to, show, to break this stuff down. God's Word is mathematical. It is exactly mathematic. And if men don't, they say, I hate that math, I hate that algebra, I hate that trig, I hate that. You're cheating yourself out of the Word of God. It's not hard. Jimmy uses it when he plays. You use it when you work on a car. And you use it in the Word of God. I'm not wanting you to become great algebra students. You get these, you get these basic, these basic things equal to the same thing or each, equal to each other, equal substituted for equal, the results are equal. You get these basic axioms. You're going to use, if you use it in the Word of God, haven't y'all seen me say faith equals the Sabbath before? And that faith is, faith is the substance, and substance is hypostasis. And hypostasis comes from under. It means an understanding. But immediately I'm thinking of understanding with faith. I'm thinking of, of there's none that understandeth. How do you understand? Well, God has to make you understand. When you understand, what do you understand? What is it you understand when you understand something? What's a word? Foundation. Definition. Truth. You understand instruction, don't you? Well, yeah. You understand instruction. What is the word instruction? The doctrine. Doctrine. Understanding is doctrine, and I'm I'm substituting equals for equals as we're going along. I'm not even stopping and telling you about all of them. Doctrine is understanding. Doctrine means instruction. Now, I do this constantly. I've never explained it to y'all before. I've said, I use algebra all the time. And I think y'all think maybe I was just saying that. I'm thinking algebra axioms all through my messages. If people use this, it's, the, it's gold in just this basic first week of algebra, first month of algebra, it's like under, it gives you an ability that you cannot possibly comprehend any other way. Now, if faith is understanding, and understanding is instruction, instruction is the word doctrine, what, is, what are you called when you understand something? You're called a learner, aren't you? Yeah. And if you're a learner, what is that word? It's the word mathetes. A learner is a m a t h e t e s. And what? And what is the English word? Disciple. And what does it take to be a disciple? Jesus said in Luke fourteen twenty seven, all these things are equal. Do you see that? Yes. And things equal to the. Same thing are equal to one another. Aren't they? Yes. You understand that, Gerald, don't you? Oh, yeah. And you went to what grade? Six. Six. Sixth grade, and he became a two and die maker. Machine. Went to a real uh, machinist. And he made a real good living. Now, if you're a disciple, Jesus said, this, all this leads over to understanding. If you're a disciple, Jesus said in Luke 14, 27, He said, if you do not bear your cross, you cannot be my disciple. Therefore, a cross, bearing a cross, equals to a disciple, doesn't it? And a disciple equals to being a, <clears throat> a learner that is a learner. A learner learns instruction, which is the word doctrine, 
And when you learn, you understand, and that's hypostasis. So when you have the substance, that's what faith is. So faith is the hypostasis, which is understanding, which is doctrine, which is instruction, which is a learner, which is a disciple, which is comes by the cross. You see that? If you learn to do this in Scripture, it will really open the Bible to you. It's just, it brings everything into the light. Now, all we did was show one thing that faith was. We hadn't gotten into faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence. It is the evidence. Evidence. Evidence is, if it's the evidence, E-L-E-G-C-H-O-S, and evidence comes from E-L-E-G-C-H-O, evidence means conviction. And conviction, when a man is convicted, what is it that rebukes a man in a court? The evidence. The evidence. This word, that word, elanco, means rebuke. What rebukes a man and tells him he's guilty is the smoking gun down there on the table with his fingerprints on it. That's the evidence. When God rebukes us, he convicts our heart. Faith is the, is the evidence of things not seen. If faith is the substance and faith is the evidence, when you're rebuked, you have an understanding, don't you? This is all algebra. I don't know if you know that. That's what it is. Now, what else am I going to get into this? I don't know if I need to stand this all night. I can do this all night long till 7 in the morning. And we'll all be tired and going, golly. When you get into the scriptures, just these few basic so, equals substituted for equals, equals added to equals, and things equal to the same thing or equal to each other. Those three axioms will take you through the New Testament like you can't believe. And you'll start studying, you'll say, this is equal to this, this is equal to this. Therefore, all of these are equal to each other. If the cross is equal to a disciple and a learner and an, inst an instruction and doctrine, I've said this to y'all a bunch of times and I hadn't slowed down and showed it to you. I've said it 500 times. Everybody here has heard me say it. Stasis means to stand upright. And from stasis, we get the word S-T-A-U-R-O-S, -S, which is a derivative of the word stasis. That is the word cross. And we took this word and came all the way out here to a cross, didn't we? So, faith understands, receives the instruction of God, learns, is a disciple, crucifies self, and quits worrying about everything, and rests in it. All of this is equal to the Sabbath. Do you see that? Now, I'm doing this going 50 miles an hour, 100 miles an hour sometimes, Saying this is equal this is equal this and this is equal this and you're going, gosh, how did you see that? Math. That's how. Mike understands when I'm doing this. Because he teaches algebra and trig out at the schools and stuff. If you can learn this, that's what it is. So when I do this, I'll be glad to write these down, or Mike can write these axioms down. I'll probably say them simpler than he does. Let me write them down. He'll have you. Well, here in advanced calculus, we say, I'm, I'm going to stop, Mike. They can't go that. Don't go past the first day. Now, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, go back here to 2 Peter. I'm, the reason I'm talking slow, I want you to see how I think. Look here in 2 Peter. When you add to your faith, you, I've had everybody here come to me and say, Jim, I don't know how to stop worrying. I don't know how to stop hassling. I've got problems and I can't get the job I want. I can't do this. And rest. 
get into the Sabbath, that's faith. Add to your faith. Well, you can't do that one day. Let's look through this. Go to 2 Peter. And remember, add epikoregel means to cover your life with God's circular dance. And here's the dance. He shows you what it is. And he names seven things you have to add. This is one of my favorite parts of the scripture. Y'all know I use this preaching on sevens on Sunday night. Besides all this, give all diligence. Add to your faith. When you add to faith, you have to add to the Sabbath, don't you? Because faith and resting, if, you're, if faith is death to self, I want to really explain this. Faith is death to self. It's death to your worries. It's death to your hassles. It's death to your sins. It's death to your ceasing to worry about what job you got or whether you're going to be successful. What you do is you come to the realization that God said in Isaiah 46 and 10, He's declared the end from the beginning and everything that's not yet done, every problem in your life that you can't solve, you die to it and you begin to rest. That's faith. That's the Sabbath. Do y'all see that? I'm asking you because I don't want to lose you. When you add to your faith, if things, if equals are added to equals, the results are equal. That's a mathematical axiom. You add to faith, that's how you add to your rest. You increase your rest in Christ. Do y'all see that? That's what you do. Well, let's see, how, how are you going to learn to rest? Well, besides all this, give all diligence, add to your faith or add to your Sabbath virtue. The word virtue is the word arete, A-R-E-T-E. Here's how you learn to rest. You, that word means manliness. Manliness. What is a man? Mature person, isn't it? That's somebody that's grown. You remember? The Bible says in Hebrews, the fifth chapter, strong meat belongs to those who are of full age. Strong meat, the word strong is stereos, S T R E O S. S-T-E-R-E-O-S, stereos. It means stiff. Beef steak. Milk belongs to babies. Beef steak belongs to people who are full age. You remember the word full age? Huh? The word full age is T-E-L-E-I-O-T-E-S. Complete. Mature. Mature, we get martyr. You cannot martyr yourself. You can't martyr yourself when you're a young baby believer. I'll tell you one of the best illustrations of martyrdom is maturing. When a mother has kids and she goes into the house and the kids, Mom, I'm hungry. And Mama's hungry too. What, is, what does a mature woman do? She feeds her kids. She doesn't care what. She don't care if she's dying. She feeds the kids. You know what that's called? Death to self. You do what you're supposed to do, not what you want to do. You say, God, what am I supposed to do? You read the Word. You believe the Word of God. That's the flesh. That's the bread. You enter into the veil and you die to the flesh, don't you? I really hope I can help you see this. Here's how you add to your faith. You have to become a man. How do you become a man? You have to mature. Do you do that one day? No, if you're young and you're worrying about all your problems, you'll do that till God makes you die. And that comes... And that comes very slowly over the years. You can't give up self all at once. You can't do it. That's why we have to repent. That's why when Jesus said, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily. Every day, take your cross. That's why we die daily. Because we got so much of self in us. 
And the more you die, the more you learn to rest in all the things that God's doing in your life. That's why Paul said, I die daily. Look here. Let's go, let's go on down. Add to your faith virtue. Become a man mature. It takes a long time to grow up. It takes a lot of food, a lot of exercise, a lot of godly exercise. When you go out here and you witness to people, you say, I don't know that much Bible. Give them what you got. You want to mature and grow up real fast, it's not going to happen. Jeff's not going to get real mature real quick. Danny's not going to grow up for a long time spiritually. It takes years. You can't become like Jim Brown overnight. I'm 64. I've been to hell and back about 50 times. Sat at death's door four different times. Thought I was dying. You got to go through some things. That's how you mature. You got some worrying to do, and that's sin. Then to virtue, knowledge, that's gnosis. That's the Word of God. How long does it take you to add this Word? You know what we're talking about? Adding equals to equals. We're going to add to faith, and by adding to faith, faith equals the Sabbath. We're going to add to our resting. The more of this you go through, the more rest you're going to have in the Lord. Isn't that right, Gerald? Yeah. Isn't it easier for you to rest at your age? Oh, yeah. Huh? Yeah. When you get old, you get to rest. Right, Jimmy? You get to rest. You get to where you go. You, people, and kids come like, hey, man, let's move. Come on. Hey, let's go down to the concert. Do it. And I used to couldn't understand when I was 19 to 20. Let's go to the concert. What's wrong with you? You're old man. Hey. And now somebody comes along to me. I'm going, I ain't going nowhere. I've already done that. It's boring. You go. Get out of my life. <laughs> That's what you feel when you get old. Isn't that right, Gerald? Isn't that right, Jimmy? That's the way you feel. I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to sit down over here. I wanted to boogie and go out there and jump and go to the concert too. Look here, let's go to the gospel concert. Let's go down here and do this and over here and here. No, I'm too old. I'm resting. Not only spiritually resting, I'm physically resting. And whether you believe it or not, Danny, that's what you're going to do. One day, if you live long enough, that's what Noah will do if he lives long enough. He's jumping around now and he's got no, enough energy for 15 dogs and 5 cats. But There'll come a time he won't have that, and he'll give up self. I told a guy last night, I said, I am sick and tired of me. And he just said, man, he said, that's saying something. I said, no, God will make you tired of yourself, and when you get tired of yourself, you die to self, don't you? Look here. I'm not going to go through all of these, but you add to your, you add knowledge. We're talking about adding equals to equals, aren't we? Here's how, I'm here to tell you all of this has to happen in your life before you can really learn to rest in Christ. You say, I'm going through all this. Try your best to take each day and learn to be content where you are and what's happening in your life regardless of everything that's going on. The sooner we can realize that God has ordained all these things in our lives, the sooner we can rest. But when we get self-involved, that's when we get to worrying and hassling and arguing and fussing and fighting and we, and we start fighting each other. And that ain't nothing but self. Now, people say things to me today, I just shrug it off and it's like water on the ground. If they'd have said it to me when I was 30, I'd have been jumping up and down and climbing up the wall and want to fight and scream and yell at them. I'm just going, now I go. I just know that's what God wants in my life and that guy wants, God wants that guy to give me a hard time. That's what he wants. Look here. We add knowledge, the Word of God, and we add to that temperance. Temperance has the idea of suffering long, macrothomia. It means to suffer a long time and put up with a lot. Well, now, being young, Pam, are you able to uh, put up with a whole lot? Probably not, not as much as me. <laughs> See, that's going to take some years. You have to learn to even... You have to rest to a degree in the fact that you're not going to learn to rest a lot until the years go by. That's the way it is. But you've got something to look forward to. I don't. I've got something to look forward to. You don't. You've got a long life to look forward to, and I've got death coming very shortly. That's the way it is. Well, that depends on the will of God. Well, I, you, can, you can believe uh, the will of God is I'm going to die soon. 
As far as you, I don't know. You might not live a long time. But as a young person in the world, if you live, you've got a long life to look forward to, and I've got a short one. Now, into knowledge, temperance, to temperance, patience. We're adding, we're adding equals to equals, aren't we? This is algebra, people. We're adding to faith, and by doing that, we're adding to everything that faith is equal to. We're also adding faith. We're also adding, when we add to faith, we're adding to our understanding, aren't we? We're adding to doctrine, we're adding instruction, we're adding the learning process in our life, and we're adding a daily cross, isn't that right? That's algebra. Now, we add patience, the word is hupo meno, H-U-P-O, M-E-N-O, oh, no, excuse me, hupo mone, excuse me, Hupo Mone. That's the word patience. And the Bible says, the trying of your faith worketh patience. So if you're going to add patience, you've got to go through trials. If you go through trials, you'll add to your patience. That's adding to faith, which is the Sabbath. I hope this is not boring to you. I hope you understand what I'm saying. What you do is you add one thing and another. And by the way, the word hupomone, H-U-P-O-M-O-N-E, that is the verb. Hupomeno is the noun. And the word hupomone is the word endure. When the Bible says, they that endure to the end, the same shall be saved, that's the people who's going through fire and their patience is, being, is adding, being added to their faith. You can't get strong in the Sabbath till you get strong in the faith. You can't get a lot of rest until you add all these things to your faith. Now, I'm sorry, uh, people, young people, you have to go through it. It's the pathway to God. You got a lot of energy, you got a lot of hormones running, you got a lot of enjoyment, you got a lot of chemistry going in your body, and you'll enjoy some things in life today. You'll enjoy things in life more than I will. But I'll enjoy spiritual things today more than you will. Because of age and fire, that's what it takes. Sorry, but you got to go through it. Then he says, you add godliness. The word Eusebia means the gospel scheme. It means a well-reverencing. The gospel scheme is the word Eusebia, E-U-S-E-B-E-I-A. It comes from you and Sebomai, S-E-B-O-M-A-I. Sebomai, that word means to revere. When you look up the word revere, it means to worship. Worship means to bow to God and give Him the glory and praise for everything. You've got several words for worship. I don't have time to go there. So when you, when you add God in this, you're adding to your worship, you're adding to the will of God. One of the words worship, P-R-O-S-C-H-U-N-E-O. It comes from pros. And in K E O N, pros means forward, kion means hound or dog. It means to lick the hand. It has the idea of the dog coming in and licking the mouth of the other dog. And when you see wolves in a pack and you see the alpha male up there and he's ruling the pack, and all the others come in with their tails between their legs and they're licking him, that's where we get our word worship from. They lick him in the mouth saying, can I eat, Master, whenever you want me to? And he rules. That's worship. When you add godliness, you add worship, and you're adding to your godliness, that's adding to faith. When you really bow to God, lick the hand of God and say, whatever you want me to have. Not, I think I need this, and I've got to make all my plans and do this for God. And when we're pushing ourselves for our way, rather than backing up and dying mm -hmm. and worshiping God and saying, I told, I don't know, it was Bob and Ginger or somebody, I said, when the turn came in my life was when God beat me up for years. I mean, he 
put me through, I mean, car wrecks, wrecking vans on the road, hurricanes, went through every kind of a sickness in the hospital, dying, and I woke up in the hospital in my early 40s and said, Lord, I give up. I, I, that's when I really began to seek God and begin to try to worship Him and lick Him on the mouth and say, God, whatever you want me to have, instead of worrying about what I'm supposed to be getting. We're not to be taking thought for our life. We're to be dying to self. And all of this is, you can see it through these simple algebra axioms. You understand this, Gerald? Gerald's been, uh, he's not a superior educated man, but he's a very wise man in the world. Don't think an old man is not wise because he doesn't have some lengthy education. You can go to Gerald and he can tell you about life. That's true. And you don't mind me saying that, do you? Now, then you add, and what are we adding to? Adding to faith. Faith equals the Sabbath, so we add to the Sabbath. When, you, when equals are added to equals, the results are equal. The same thing you add to your faith, you're adding to your resting. Without adding to your faith, you can't rest in Christ. You can't rest in all these things of God. Look here. And you add to patience... Godliness, into godliness, Eusebia, you add brotherly kindness. Brotherly kindness, not kindness to everyone. Brotherly kindness. The word is Philadelphia. P-H-I-L-A-D-E-L-P-H-I-A. -E when you add that to your faith, you're adding to resting in Christ because these two things are equal to each other. That's algebra. I'm going to keep saying that. You add Philadelphia, it comes from philos, and A-D-E-L-P-H-O-S, Adelphos. That means a fondness for the brothers. Adelphos means brothers. Who is your brother? <laughs> See, there you are again, going off in another direction your brother is those who do the will of the father of Jesus and my brothers and my sisters so this does not mean you can go out and have a brotherly love to everybody in the world you cannot have a fondness for everybody Jesus said you are my friends friend is the word p-h-i-l-i-a and we get the word philos fondness from the word philia Jesus said you are I will be affectionate to you if you keep my commandments. So what we add to our faith here and adds to our resting is we learn to separate from the world and we quit having affection for the world. We only have affection for our brothers in Christ. You can, what is it you ha can like in somebody? The word, it comes from phileo, P-H-I-L-E-O. How can you have a phileo or an affection for somebody who has no truth and they have no Christ in them? The way you increase your rest is you fellowship with truth only. You separate from the world. Come out and be separate and touch not the unclean thing. You add Philadelphia. That's the city of brotherly love, isn't it? Yeah. Brotherly love means a love for the brethren. It doesn't mean a love for everybody in the world. It doesn't mean have a brotherly love towards John Dillinger and have a brotherly love towards Jeffrey Dahmer and have a brotherly love towards this axe murder and the Green River Killer that killed 47, 48 people recently. They caught him and he said he's the biggest. I love you, brother. He's not your brother if he's not doing the will of the Father. Mm -hmm. This goes along with separating from the world. Come out and be separate. Touch not the unclean thing. When you learn to separate from the world, you learn to rest because you're adding that to your faith and you add it to your rest. You're adding equals to equals, aren't you? Yep. That's what you're doing. Didn't you do that as a machinist? Oh, yeah. Did it all the time, didn't you? Yeah. Didn't think you'd understand algebra when you were in sixth grade, did you? That's my equivalent uh, regular scale. You know, yeah. That's just the same thing. Everybody's using it. Yeah. Everybody uses it. Well, look here. And how long could I spend on separating from the world when God would tell Israel, don't intermix, don't intermarry, 
with the world. Don't intermarry with those sons. God separate from them. I could go into the sons of God marrying the daughters of men right here, couldn't I? Yeah. Because that's belief marrying a lie. Don't mix. Love the brothers only. Have an affection for the brothers. Nobody else. Come out from the world. Don't fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rebuke them. If anybody preaches any other doctrine, do not bid them Godspeed. You don't add understanding to your faith by going out and fellowshipping with somebody who's preaching another doctrine, another understanding, another instruction, another learning, another disciple, a disciple of Satan. Satan transformed himself to an angel of light into another Jesus, didn't he? I hope you can see what I'm saying. Maybe you can get this video and watch it over again. And then we add, we're adding to our faith, so we're adding to the Sabbath. And everything that faith is, the Sabbath is. And everything you can find that the Sabbath is, the spiritual Sabbath, that's resting, isn't it? And the more you can add to your faith, the more God adds to your faith. That's why he says, in everything give thanks. If he adds fire to your faith, the fiery trials of your right, life works patience, and you add patience to your faith, that's what makes you rest more because faith equals Sabbath. Every, if you want to know how to rest, you have to learn to believe that God is doing everything. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I won't, I'm getting some puzzled looks. I'm not going to preach this a lot but my mind is going 100 miles an hour thinking this way all the time. I'm preaching a lot of time. This is equal, this is equal, this is equal, this. And if we subtract this from this, we subtract this, can't we? And it's that way they're equal. And y'all are going, yeah, that's right. Sometimes I don't even give you the axioms. I don't use the word math or algebra. And you're going, yeah, yeah I see that. It's one big mosaic. It's one big mosaic. You can take any one of these words and go off in 100 directions. You go into false doctrine. You don't add false doctrine. You add the doctrine of Christ. You can't, and you can't be cheerful to anybody. You're not adding the doctrine of Christ if you're cheerful to people that have another doctrine. If anybody comes preaching any other doctrine, Second John 10, receive them not into your house. You are the house of God. Don't receive them into your fellowship. Don't receive them into your literal house. If a man comes up to my door and he's preaching free will and this and that and and I know he preaches free will. I'm not inviting him over. And if he comes up to my door, I'll open the door, step out on the front porch, say, yeah, what do you want? Yeah. I'm not, he's not coming in and sit down with me and fellowship with me. The Bible says don't do it. You don't learn to rest when you embrace the world. You have to die to self. Add all these things that God said. They're all equal to one another. I'm going to give you a test next week. <laughs> And then to patience you, I mean to brotherly kindness, I can spend all, day, all night long on brotherly kindness. To brotherly kindness, you add charity. When you add to charity, when you add charity to faith, since faith is equal to the Sabbath, I'm going to keep saying it, when you add charity, to faith, you add charity to the Sabbath because they're equal to each other, don't you? And the Sabbath is your resting. It's learning to accept everything that comes and the, the wind blows the roof off your house. Well, look at there. God wants me to have a convertible house. Ain't that great? I can see the sky now. Ain't that good? Look at that pretty clouds. Look at that bird. I bought a, back when I was trying to be fancy, I bought a brand new, super beautiful town car back in 1986. But I believed the truth back then. And I was sitting in a, sitting in a, uh, didn't believe as much as I believe now because I wouldn't do that now. And that takes time, that takes time to learn to scale yourself down. You don't do that all of a sudden either. And I was sitting in a turn lane and I was selling real estate and this lady was in the car beside me and I looked up the road there and I was going, and there's a pickup coming right at me. I said, that ain't guy, that guy is not going to, he's not going to turn up. I pull my wheel to the right and I hit the gas and he took the whole side out of that brand new town car. I mean from front to the back. Just whoa. and he was trying to kill himself. Found out he just got out of the hospital and he was 
he was he only had a few months to live, so he just figured this is the best way to do it. And he died a couple of days later, not from the wreck, but from the disease, and he was going to take me out with him. I got out of the car and I said, and I was just real calm, and I said, look what God did. <laughs> and, a, and the lady said, are you all right? You seem like you're something wrong. I said, no, the Lord did that. And she said, they couldn't. What does he mean? And I was just calm. I just turned to a guy. I said, can you drive me home? I said, told the lady, I said, I'll, I'll have to call you, get another car, do something. See you later. We have to get this fixed. I was just calm as I could be, and I just... <laughs> but I was 48 then, and I was learning to rest in things. I knew if something that drastic happened, and I knew I didn't have any control over that, if we can learn to rest and believe God in the things that we do think we have a control over, like, I'm going to have to get this job and get this school, and I've got to get this degree, and I've got to... And, I'm, I'm worried that we don't have the right kind of car and we got to do this and it's up to me to do it and it's no it's not just work today take no thought for the mar the mar shall take thought for the thing of itself and sufficient unto the day is the eve of there rest by adding these things to your faith and what is it charity the last thing there is charity what is charity agape. it is agape when you add agape you start resting what is agape? That's one of the words we keep saying that has ambiguously been translated into the word L-O-V-E. Well, agape, the reason I want to define it, I've defined it so many times, is to show you. When you want to rest, you find something that's equal to rest, which is faith. You find out how to increase your faith and you get to where you can accept all the bad things that happen to you in life that you think are bad. And God says, in everything give thanks. When he says, in everything give thanks, this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Do you actually think that he means Jackie right now? Be thankful right now, right? Real quick. He's talking about over time, learn to be thankful. And it'll take you time to learn that. It's something you have to learn. Paul said when he was in prison in Philippians 4.11, he was ready to be beheaded. The, four, the book of Philippians is one of the last books that he wrote when he was in prison. And he said, I have learned. How do you learn? By cross. You become a learner, a disciple by the cross. I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content because I've been crucifying myself for a long time and God may put me through all this fire be thankful when the fire comes when you roll your car when you slide in the snow you slide into a ditch you bust your axle say God you've got this for a purpose yes, you're sir. molding me into what you want me to be Lord let me be thankful and rest in this He's adding to your faith. He's adding to your dying. You say, how do I know what this trial is for? You don't have to know. You know what it's like? It's like having a camel and you start putting straws on him. And there's, old, there's an old saying, this is the straw that broke the camel's back. How many straws do you have to get to to get to the one that breaks his back? How many straws does God have to put on you and how many trials before He puts you under His hand and puts you on the ground? As many as He wants. To. Yeah, yeah. As many as He wants and every one of those is just one of the straws. Every trial is another straw. He's taking you to a place where you collapse one day and you say, I give up on me. I'm tired of me, God. Mm -hmm. Let's do it your way. That's what this is about. And without really understanding some basic algebra actions, I believe if people would try to see these, you really understand the Bible better. It helps you to see this is equal to this, and we can substitute. If faith, every time you find that, well, I've got to finish this on charity. Charity, when you add to your faith, you add to your Sabbath. Add equals to equals. The results are equal. When you add to your faith, you get that much rest. And only God knows how to define it. I don't know how to define the rest that you get in the Sabbath. But I know this. 
the trying of my faith and all the fire I went through, God has been adding. Remember the word seven means to complete, be completed? When God sevens us, He makes us rest and He makes us mature and we're willing to say the word and we don't care what the cost is. I'm at an age, I don't care whether anybody likes what I'm saying or not. A guy said last night, said, my wife, he called me from Tucson, said, my wife thinks you're just too angry. She said, he's just too angry. I said, that's because she's ignorant. She doesn't know enough to be angry. I said, if she ever learns that she's being lied to by the politicians, by the preachers, by the doctors, by the lawyers, by everybody that's in our society, I said, she'll learn to get angry. She's being cheated. And the, I said, I told him, I said, besides that, the Bible says, be angry. And when it says that, it's an imperative mood. It's a command. I said, your wife evidently doesn't know enough to know that she's being cheated and lied to. If you ever learn that you're being cheated and lied to, you start getting angry when you see these false teachers pollute the sheep and lead them away. Now, we're adding faith. We're adding to our faith, adding to our resting. Here's how you rest. Do you, Pam, do you understand that? You got to add, you, you can't learn, Jim, I want to get this real quick. Sorry. <laughs> I had a guy in Fort Worth said, Jim, pray that God will really help me to get real mature quick. I said, okay, God, let's uh, pray that you'll break Richard's neck and put him in a car accident and make him a quadruplete. He said, wait a minute, I don't mean that. I said, well, that's what it takes. You want to get real, you got to go through a lot of trials real fast if you want to mature fast. I've become a martyr fast. Young people got to go slow. That's just the way it is. It doesn't happen quick. But if you can come to the realization that God planned this wreck, He said, I declared everything from the beginning. If you, you, can, you get a mental understanding of that right now, don't you? Greg gets a mental understanding. Greg used to deal drugs and he got shot. And that's why he's in that wheelchair. And you know what? That's the will of God. Isn't that great? He's maturing him. And he'll talk to you about that, tell you all about drugs. We've had several guys in here. I don't think anybody else in, in here is taking drugs, have you? <laughs> Never I'm afraid everybody in here has been in something, haven't we? Yeah. That Thank God for that. Yes, sir. If God hadn't put you through that, if he hadn't put me through what he's put me through, we'd be dead somewhere else acting like we were acting. He stops us. We'd be in a Baptist church now. You'd put me in a Baptist church, yeah. <laughs> Look here. We add charity to our faith, so we, this is how you learn to rest. Charity is the word agape, and you have the word phileo. Both of those were translated into love in the New Testament English, and, that, and they don't even mean the same thing, so you've got to define them. Phileo is affection. In agape, that is a relationship that a king had with his subjects. The subjects had with the king. And it had to do with the king giving them laws and they willingly walked in them. Second John 6. Herein is love. Herein is agape. Herein is charity that we walk after his commandments. You have to add to your faith walking in the commandments of God. And the more you walk in God's commandments, the more you crucify self, and the more you learn to rest and just relax in everything that's happening. You'll get to the point when the worst thing in the world happens to you. You say, ain't that something? Look what God's done. Cut my leg off. He wants to show me what I can do with one leg. Ain't this great? You actually come to that place in life. I had a biopsy recently and Doctor said they didn't find any cancer, and he said, uh, they didn't find any cancer, but you got two spots on your prostate. And I just said, is there anything I can do? He said, no, we'll just have to keep close tabs on it. You'll have to have another biopsy if your PSA rises up. I said, okay. Hadn't been nervous about it, just accepted it. I'm old, you're supposed to do that. You'll get to the place, if you're young, if somebody told you you had cancer, Jeff, it might bother you at this point. It, you, you think, I'm a Christian, I'm ready to go, until you get something like that. And when you're young, it's be really hard to face. It's not as hard to face when you get older. 
I'm just calm. I hadn't thought anything about it. He said, we've got to keep a close watch on it. it. We can't tell what it can turn into. We've got to watch it real close. I said, okay. That's it. You have, that is resting in the Sabbath. I couldn't do that 30 years ago. I have to go through a lot of fire. I have learned God has disabled me. He has put me on my back, put me right at death's door. And if God will do that to your life, if you'll do, the best way you can have faith in God is just be on your back and you can't move. And you're dying. God, I, I don't want to be famous anymore. I don't want to spar anymore. I don't want to be rich anymore. God, can I get up out of bed and would you let me breathe? If you want it that way, your will be done. I'm going to bow to you. I don't want you to kill me, and I don't want to go into eternity unprepared. God, I bow to you. If you'll do that enough till you wake up one day and say, Lord, let's do it your way. I'm sick of me. And when you really get fed up with your own ways and your own desires, that's when you really learn to rest because God's adding to, he's adding equals to equals. He's adding to your faith, and that adds to your Sabbath. You see that? Let me show you something. Am I out of time? Yeah. Look here. <laughs> this is every word in the Bible, in the New Testament, out of your word study concordance. This is every time the word faith is mentioned all through here. Every one of those verses, everything that faith does or everything that is done to increase faith increases your rest. So we need to study every word in the, every time the word faith is mentioned in the New Testament. We need to study it every time it's mentioned to find out how we learn to rest. If faith cometh by hearing, if we have to be obedient to the faith, faith and Sabbath are the same, we'll substitute Sabbath for the word faith. We have to be obedient to the Sabbath, don't we? <laughs> and this goes, and we keep the Sabbath and we keep the faith. And it goes on and on and on and on. If you can learn to think this way, it opens the Scripture wide open. I mean, just... You've got to learn to think. You don't have to say algebra or math. But it's true in the Bible as well as it is in life, as well as it is in cooking, whether you're playing the guitar, whether you're playing the piano, whether you're building a car. Gerald's done this in his... If you cut something off of one end, you've got to, And it's got to be so long, you've got to equal it over here on the other, don't you? That's adding equals to equals subtract, and that's the same thing. It doesn't matter what you're in, you're going to use it. Learn to use it in the Word of God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for truth. Thank you for your Word. Help us to grasp this thing. I pray that you, Lord, you know I'm not trying to teach people just a math course. I'm trying to show them how to think about the Word of God. God, help them to see. You know that's my only purpose, is to help them, help convict their hearts that they'll desire to think this way because, God, you are the great mathematician. You're the one that constructed this thing this way so we can learn it this way. Thank you for truth. Crush us under your hand and add to our resting, add to our faith and all the things that they are. And we'll give you praise in Christ's name. Amen. I hope this wasn't too difficult.
because you're at Jesus Christ. Because they believe each other. So when you're getting in marriage, you're not adding to your faith. So that's the difference. That's why it's so true. When you go around and you run around and you run around, you're not adding your brother to your kindness. You're adding, you're adding eros. You're adding an affection for the world. You're adding, you're adding the love of money to your life. And all that chaos is coming. And it's coming into your life and you can't rest. It's, 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 it's real. If everybody gets this anymore, this is one of the most important things I've ever done. This shows how I'm thinking when I'm teaching. And once you learn, if you learn these three mathematical axioms, you this is going to enhance your whole life. It's going to enhance the scripture. I know he sees it, but he's a good mathematician. So it's mine. They see it. You're not. Don't tell me. <laughs> but it's a way it's a way of life it's the way you think and if you don't think like this you're wanting to stay on the bottom rung of the ladder and you're not wanting to climb up and add to your faith if you don't think if anybody can do it a fifth grader can do it you take the basic axiom and apply it and say see that
So when Deke is doing that, you're on your eye. He's not trying to be there while he's doing it. He's trying to make you set aside. What if there's something that I do? You want to go with us? Well, well, what he's doing, you're smart on my eye. I've done a lot of it. does so well. All that took like 15 minutes. So he wants you to learn. Uh, 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 rest here. But the only way you're going to do rest is at the end. Uh, uh, let's go do the rest. And that's the law that you're going to do. You say, Lord, that's my faith. You say, wait. Maybe tomorrow. But while you're waiting, these things are going to be going on. They close at 2.30. It's not something you're going to do. It's something he's going to do. You just don't know when He's going to make you win all the He's looking for excuses to try to talk. He's looking for He looks for any excuse he can to try to talk. He's looking for any excuse he can to try to talk. He's looking for any excuse he can to try to I'm sorry you have to go. Well, for some reason, I was going to learn to. He's defined his own trans. I say you have to email him to move. Well, like I said, I'm going to have to move. You've got to add him to that. Don't hit me. I believe it's very common sense. It is common sense. I don't know much about that. Excuse me. Was it hard to do?
situation. He's having a bad day. I just couldn't get it. And just started getting real angry and yelling and throwing and stuff. Well, that, that's got to be the thing. I had a college education. 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 I had a we all want to see but I, this is where this thinking comes in. You, you think the same way. It's just that I don't think it in terms of love. Well, I'm not thinking really, that numbers. That's what algebra is. Trying to do things generally. It's a concept. Trying to use X. It's a concept. Once you three start three thinking this way, if you learn these three accents I gave you tonight, you kind of sit down and learn what they all must You add the kids and lay down and show three. Add the faith. Whatever faith is equal to, whatever faith is equal to, when you add the faith, you're adding to everything that faith is equal to. You're adding to the hearing. You're adding to obedience. You're adding That's mathematical. Yeah, I know it's mathematical. I've just never had to approach it in the terms of Well, you need to. Working with numbers. You need to because you're not. You're not bad with numbers, you're too smart to be, because I see you see stuff all the time. Some of the things you're doing, yeah, I see more stuff than you know. Yeah. It's like I said, when a woman substitutes something in a cake or a pie, she that is bad. She went to the sixth grade, and she's an old country girl, and she's going to hike stuff like this here. She don't even know what's about that. I Saying everybody will learn, everybody has the same gift. I want to give you a chance to learn how to Oh, yeah, learn. yeah, the original Willie. But now you realize what the Willie went with. You knew that this is what I was going to go on. Well, these, are the, these are the same accents you use when you teach cowboys. About the dollar phone? Yeah. Oh! Yeah, this has been pretty yeah. long. Yeah, same thing with Louisiana. And learn to do it this way. I'm not yeah. doing this to get a right here. Right 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 this is one of the most important messages I have ever preached. And the one I hate the most, man, that guy. That's what I was telling that old boy that Eric got. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, everybody's not going to be on the top of understanding. God's given to every man a measure of faith. He's given to every man a measure of faith. He's broken his law, he showed a measure of resting. Everybody doesn't have the same measure of resting. And everybody doesn't have the same measure of faith, which is understanding. Are those commercials there? You need to be with the thing in the world because these guys, these guys, in this church, none of them think like this. I think it's made, I'll tell you what, I think it's pretty good. Wait a minute. At the last trunk. 